If you are suffering from fatigue or you're working with clients or patients who are suffering from fatigue, you may have been wondering how much of a role does genetics play? There are so many imbalances that can cause fatigue. And so many times people just wanna take the out and blame it on their genes, blame it on mom and dad. So today we're gonna to explore whether genes play a role and if they do, just how much of a role do they play? in the manifestation of low energy and fatigue. So welcome back to the channel where we empower people to regain their health and their vitality by applying and identifying different root cause things that are causing them to be out of balance. We also help health and wellness practitioners to really look at people from a functional perspective and get great results for their clients. Today, we're gonna to start by looking at the way that genes impact metabolic function and what role they may have and how much energy a person has. So let's look at genes from a perspective of what do they influence? We know they influence our eye color, our hair color, stature, and various physical traits. When we look at a group of people, we see that there's a lot of differences between them, but they all have eyes and ears and noses and mouths. That difference between them in terms of what they actually look like. It's not just a matter of all brown eyed people look the same or all blue eyed people look the same. There's so many subtle differences in features. And guess what? Those are controlled by genes. The silly thing to think about is that those genes only play a role in the differences a tiny, tiny bit compared to everything else that's the same. We are the same genetically by 99 point something percent to all of our other fellow humans, yet we all look very different. The other thing that genes control is what's going on inside. The biochemical pathways, the neurotransmitters, how the digestion works are controlled by genetic functions. And there are variations, subtle differences between people. We call those in genetics terms, single nucleotide polymorphisms. They're basically, we call them SNPs for short. And the variations in those SNPs makes a difference between whether you're gonna be prone to getting asthma or I'm gonna be prone to having ulcerative colitis or whether somebody else is not prone to either. So the genes play a role in the biochemical pathways and help to predispose us to variations and illnesses. But here's the deal. It's only when the lifestyle factors are off. It's only when nutrient imbalances and, and stressful situations and toxic exposures get in the way of proper functioning. Do genes control how much energy you have? Well, maybe, yeah. There are genetic factors. There are some of these SNPs, these single nucleotide polymorphisms that actually affect how someone is going to metabolize energy, make energy, how well their mitochondria are gonna work, how well their tissue oxygenation is gonna work, how well their thyroid is going to work. And there's so many others. In our other video on lab testing, I'll go through a little bit more detail on some of the functions that can be out of balance in order to cause somebody to become fatigued. A lot of times people go to the doctor, you may have done this or had this experience before where it's like, oh, you're tired. Okay, here, take this iron supplement or, oh, your thyroid function's a little off. Take this thyroid hormone. There's so much more to me energy metabolism than that. The latest and the greatest in the supplement world is take this mitochondrial supplement, that will fix everything. And mitochondrial supplements can help, don't get me wrong. All of the nutrients that are required by mitochondria, the powerhouses in every cell make ATP, those can be helpful, the B vitamins and CoQ10 and lipoic acid and amino acids and so many others. They can be helpful, but you can't out supplement a poor diet and a stressful lifestyle. So we have to look at it as a package. So the genes inform those biochemical pathways on how to work. The genes can make certain biochemical pathways more sensitive to environmental influences or less sensitive to environmental influences. We need to look at it as a big package. Genes play a role. But some scientists think it's very little, like less than 1%. Others might say 5% of what 
people experience in terms of symptoms, in terms of how they feel, in terms of energy, is controlled by genes. Whichever, it's still a small percentage. And here's the cool thing. Epigenetics is the key piece. How your diet and lifestyle affect your epigenetics is, is very empowering. It can also be considered disempowering because it means that going out and eating those Cheetos and McDonald's hamburgers and garbage food is going to affect you more if you have some genetic tendencies. Doesn't mean it's not going to affect you at all. And here's the thing. Our understanding of genetics is in the infancy stage. Yes, we've identified tens of thousands of genes. We've identified over 600,000, probably close to a million of these SNPs, those single nucleotide polymorphisms. But do we understand all of that yet? Absolutely not. We're still working on that. So when in doubt, leave it out is one of my phrases. So back in the I guess it was the 80s before the Human Genome Project came about. I looked around. I said, oh, I don't know what my genes are, but I think they're pretty bad, right? Because I couldn't test them. But how did I think they were pretty bad? There were no old people in my family. People didn't tend to live much past their 70. And even then they were ill at that point. And I thought, I don't want this for myself. Likely, my genetic makeup is more sensitive to environmental factors. I'm going to be more sensitive to specific chemicals in the environment. I might be more sensitive to nutrient deficiencies or more prone to nutrient deficiencies. So it's really important that as we're looking at our own energy and our level of fatigue or not fatigue, and as we're looking at clients and patients, that we look at all the factors. I believe that the genetic understanding is super critical for helping people to make the right decision, for helping you to make the right decisions. If you know that your body is not programmed to handle a particular toxin, and that particular toxin is in some of the favorite foods that you eat all the time, perhaps you can make a decision that my health is worth it, and I'm not going to eat those particular foods. I'm not going to make those particular exposures. So coming back to the original questions, do genes affect energy level? Do genes have an impact on the manifestation of chronic fatigue, exhaustion, tiredness? Yeah, they do, but they may play a role that's not huge. So I'm just going to throw out a couple of areas where there's genetic imbalances that can affect your level of energy that can affect whether you're going to manifest as being tired all the time. That's what chronic fatigue means tired all the time, exhausted all the time, not having enough energy to enjoy life all the time, regularly. So there are genetic factors, SNPs, single nucleotide polymorphisms that affect thyroid function. And we know thyroid is kind of the thermostat for the cells. I've got a chart and that's, woo, it's like, I don't know, eight pages long of all the different SNPs that affect thyroid function. So it's good to look at those things and then really work at the factors that balance thyroid functions. There's a whole bunch of them. I don't quite have eight pages of them, but maybe six, three, five, somewhere. I think there's a few that, that affect mitochondrial function, that affect adrenal function. And these are all related to how well that we metabolize and make energy. So these are some of the areas. Blood sugar is super important for energy. So many people have those blood sugar crashes in between meals. Is that related to genes? Yeah, there's a lot of genetics associated with that. There's a lot of them, and I have 16 pages of genes related to blood sugar balance. I personally have a large number of those, which means that whereas one person might be able to eat a teaspoon of sugar and not have it send their blood sugars up through the roof, I can, which means that if I were to take on the diet and lifestyle of the average American, right, the standard American diet, we call it the SAD diet, what would happen to me? I would be diabetic. I don't want to be diabetic. I don't want to lose my kidneys. I don't want to lose my toes. I don't want to lose my vision. I don't want to have a heart attack like my parents did suddenly without warning. And I believe in looking at the genes that that was a big factor. So if you know the genes, you know the areas you have to be more careful about. If you study these, and I'll give you a, a resource where you can study these in more depth, you will understand how to inform your clients, how to 
guide your patients how to make decisions for yourself and your family so that you don't experience chronic fatigue, that you build up your energy resources to the best of your capacity. So I thank you for being here and listening to this message. Our healthcare system needs changing. We need to be focusing on the factors, the epigenetic factors that create or cause imbalances in our function, which leads to disease or health. Which do you choose? So go ahead and subscribe to the channel. I'm going to put a link in the comments of a way that you can get access to all those gene charts I was telling you about. In fact, we're having a live event and it's going to be covering that. And one of the bonuses and one of the resources you're going to get when you go is my complete set of those charts that are related to fatigue. So really good way to do it and a really good way to learn this stuff. Go ahead and click on the links that you see in front of you on the videos that are other videos in this series on fatigue. And we had a whole unit, a whole podcast episode that we turned into a YouTube video that talks about the specific genes that are related to fatigue.